The man fell from a telecommunications tower several hundred meters high, and astonishingly, he survived. He even gained extraordinary self-healing abilities. His body began to reject other inorganic materials. His miraculous transformation kept evolving. He could even release a type of spores. They could grow in petroleum and proliferate into dense vegetation. These ancient spores from billions of years ago. What secrets do they hold? The story begins a few days ago, on an oil rig off the coast of Scotland. The crew members were waiting for their vacation. Unexpectedly, there was a power outage in a northern region. The standby helicopter was called for emergency assistance. The crew had to postpone their vacations. Suddenly, there was trouble with the drilling. The alarms kept blaring. Everyone changed into their gear to prepare for repairs. The drilling platform was shaking uncontrollably. The pressure inside the well skyrocketed. The manager ordered to shut it down. After all, human lives were more important than losses. As soon as the machine stopped, a burst of flames erupted from the well. Then it returned to normal. However, the communication system of the entire platform malfunctioned, making it impossible to contact the outside world. The personnel on deck who were on standby saw the alarms being lifted, thought it was just a crisis drill. They prepared to remove their protective gear and return to the quarters. But suddenly, the platform's vibrations intensify. They had to hold on to the railing to avoid being knocked over. Then, a thick fog swept in. The fog quickly enveloped the entire platform. Visibility was less than two meters. The atmosphere on the platform grew increasingly somber. Employee David said, Perhaps this is an underwater earthquake. It's the Earth's retaliation against environmental destruction. Administrative leader Mary refuted him. The platform is not on a fault line. An earthquake is simply impossible. David didn't take it seriously. Abnormalities often signify misfortune. What just happened was definitely not a coincidence. The most important thing now is to repair the communication tower. The high metal tower was hidden in the dense fog. The working conditions were exceptionally harsh. Employee Bess, in order to qualify for the first boarding group, he went up and inspect. As he continued to climb, his vision became increasingly blurred. Bess couldn't help but call out to his colleague, Max, but there was silence below. He thought he had climbed this far. He exerted more effort. Bess continued climbing up. He was struck by a seagull on his face. Luckily, he had a safety rope protecting him. At this moment, Max also followed. The two of them reached the top for repairs. After fixing it, Max went down first. Bess fell from the communication tower. The emergency rescue team acted immediately. After preliminary examination, the doctor believed Bess had perished, unless they rushed him to the hospital. However, Bess miraculously recovered his vitality. His congested eyes widened, bizarre visions flashed through his mind, and Mary made a new discovery. No pressure was detected in all the surrounding well drillings. All the machines in the entire area had stopped working. Just as chaos ensued, an old man named Hutton caused trouble again. He stole a document from the office. He gathered everyone on the deck. Hutton publicly read the confidential document. It turned out that the oil field had entered its final phase. All rig personnel were to retire. The manager just hadn't figured out how to explain it. It was an intentional concealment. He did his best to explain to everyone. But ash suddenly fell from the sky. As arrived on the deck and silently recite. Too late. It has already begun. Everyone quickly helped Bess back to rest. Mary tried to ask him if he remembered what happened on the communication tower. As only said before falling from the tower. There was a voice in his head all along. The doctor next to him wanted to give him an injection. The needle approached. Bass had a strong reaction. He grabbed the person. His condition was very unstable. The doctor and Mary discussed in a separate room. Bass suddenly Saturday up. The wound on his arm rapidly healed. The blood vessels in his eyes kept spreading. Bass struggled to get up and changed into his work clothes. Unexpectedly, he experienced a sharp pain in his mouth. A gold tooth fell out. His body was rejecting foreign objects. Night fell quickly. The crew discovered. The lights on the backup ship kept flashing. The other party was sending a signal. A man named Lek immediately boarded the deck. He recorded the signal amidst the falling ash. Through the Morse code sent by the other party, it was known. The communication on the backup ship had also failed. They were requesting assistance. The captain instructed Max to reply using deck lights, instructing the backup ship to stand by, investigate the cause of communication failure. Meanwhile, Lef had inhaled too much ash. His already frail body became even more painful. He could only return to the living quarters to rest. Lev went to the infirmary and found a bottle of alcohol. He diluted it with water and drank it secretly, attempting to use this method for pain relief. 
Then it took off his clothes to prepare for a shower. Unexpectedly, black liquid splashed out from his sleeve. Le found it strange. He looked at his arm. The tattoo was fading. Something injected from the outside was being expelled from his body, and his nails kept bleeding. He was in unbearable pain. On the other side, the doctor discovered Baz was missing. Everyone immediately started searching. David found him in a room. Baz was doodling on the window. He drew a spiral-shaped circle. He explained to David. His mind was filled with noise, an unknown force, attempting to convey some kind of message to him. After he finished speaking, he ran out of the room. The food delivery person found Lev dead. The doctor confirmed that he died from blood loss. Lev and Bez must have been infected with some kind of virus, but his poor physical condition couldn't withstand it. The manager believed his death was related to the ash. Before informing everyone to stay indoors, Max and David arrived outside. They noticed light not far away. They decided to go and check it. Max accidentally cut his hand. The wound was exposed to the ash. He was probably going to be infected too. Just then, the deck lights started flashing. The rebellious old man Hun sent a distress signal to the backup ship. The two immediately went back inside to stop him. If let the backup ship to approach in a harsh environment, there was a high chance of collision. But Hun blocked the door. While Max and David were anxious, the falling ash gradually subsided. They split up to find another entrance. The staff heard a knocking sound. They let Max in. He immediately reported the situation of the backup ship. The manager instructed everyone not to run around, to stay quietly inside the accommodations. But David was still outside. Security Captain York went out to find him. At that moment, David encountered Baz, telling him to go back inside quickly. But he was refused. Baz wanted to figure out the unusual things in his mind. He grabbed David, until water spewed out of his mouth, and he collapsed to the ground. The backup ship was approaching the deck. Fortunately, York arrived in time, to prevent David from being swept away. Nevertheless, he was already dead, and it appeared to be a drowning death. The manager was greatly frustrated. The employees kept dying. The backup ship had also abandoned them. Mary called him to the laboratory. It was discovered that the ash was just a carrier. There were living organisms on it. They would infiltrate the human body to repair injuries, and eliminate all impurities, such as gold teeth, tattoos, and other implants. If the host was not healthy enough, they would be eliminated like Lev. Mary wanted to collect blood samples from the staff, to test and identify the infected individuals. A few hours later, the thick fog outside began to dissipate, just as everyone was relieved. A smoke-emitting area, Zone C appeared on the sea surface. Clearly, the people there were not as fortunate. They didn't survive the previous night. As took advantage of the chaos and sneaked into the laboratory, taking his own blood sample. As a result, Mary couldn't perform the test, unable to identify the infected staff. The person most likely infected was Max. He had contact with the ash through his wound. The doctor immediately examined Max and isolated him. The remaining people resumed their normal duties. The platform activated the rain shower system to wash away any remaining ash. Everyone split up and started searching to find Baz and bring him back to the living area. Meanwhile, Baz was hiding in the oil pumping mud pit room. He even gained the ability to release spores and store them in petroleum. Interestingly enough, Mary had already partially deciphered the mechanism behind it. All petroleum is formed from ancient organisms, mainly ancient plants compressed in various layers. Apart from petroleum, they also become fossils. She found a piece of land for exploration, the excavated nuclear fossil. There were similar spore-like structures found on it. Every time this substance appears, it is accompanied by enormous disasters. The most severe mass extinction event occurred 300 million years ago during the late Permian period, and the entire oil field's location originates from the Permian period. The substance in the ash is these spores. At this moment, David found the mud pit room. He saw the spores in the petroleum, as took the opportunity to attack him, and hit again. When the other colleagues arrived at the scene, they discovered that the spores in the petroleum had grown into plants, and the entire platform was shaking uncontrollably. David had developed an allergic reaction. He pushed away the others and escaped. The intense shaking caused a power outage, which would trigger a series of crises. The situation was extremely urgent. Max was released to fix the situation. Fortunately, power was finally restored, but the ignition system malfunctioned. If the condensation water on the tower overflowed, it would cause the entire platform to explode. Max knew that he was likely infected. He suggested manually igniting the fire. He gradually approached the drilling rig. 
he even removed the safety rope to get closer to the target. Max took a deep breath, he successfully ignited the flare gun, the intense flames knocked him down. Colleagues rushed over to extinguish the flames, and took him to the medical room for treatment. On the other side, the spores continued to grow in the mud pit room. Memories from centuries ago flooded Bass's mind, he realized the harm. This well drilling pipeline caused to the land and seabed. Bass was prepared to shut it down. In fact, David helped him on the side. The two of them planned to manually close the valves. The pressure in the pipeline deep under the seabed was too high. Continuing the operation would lead to an explosion. To solve the problem, they had to shut it down from the source. On the other side, apart from the burns, Max didn't show any other abnormalities. It didn't seem affected by the ash. They continued to study this ancient life form. Max circled something on the paper. It was the same as what Baz had drawn on the glass. After extensive research, Mary made a discovery. She found that there might be collective consciousness between Baz and the spores. Baz could communicate with the spores. Earth is a rock that has existed for four, five billion years, experiencing countless changes. Anything is possible, whether these spores are enemies or friends, remains to be observed. Just then, the manager called everyone together. He discovered Baz was in the control room. He probably wanted to shut down the pipeline. If the operation went wrong, it would harm everyone. The manager immediately called the mechanical operator to manipulate the circular leveler and shut off the source. As the machine was put into operation, the view of the deep sea entered the control room. Everyone noticed there was a strange set of circles around the wellhead, just like the drawing Max made on the paper. The operator cautiously approached the valve and successfully closed it. The pressure inside the pipeline quickly restored. Bass prepared to disconnect, to prevent the valve from reopening. Unexpectedly, the instrument issued a warning. Bass realized that to complete the task, he could only seek help from Max, who was proficient in the system. Max was standing in front of the screen, lost in contemplation of the mysterious circles. He began to believe Bass's incoherent words. Perhaps the other person wasn't mentally unstable, but was trying to convey some kind of message. At this moment, the operator's phone made a notification sound. The chef's radio started playing again. The signal from the drilling platform was back. Everyone immediately became busy, seeking help from the shore, contacting their families to let them know they were safe, searching online for information about the spores. No one was idle. The pregnant doctor finally managed to contact her relatives, but she unexpectedly received unfortunate news. Not only was there frequent power outages at home, the sea surface is still covered in fog. The doctor looked at the familiar scene, immediately reminded the other person to close the doors and windows, not to go outside under any circumstances. Just after saying that, all signals disappeared. Mary's internet connection was also interrupted. She was anxiously organizing her documents, but she discovered the circles drawn by Max. That's when she realized the other person had been infected. At that moment, Max heard Bass's voice. This might be what Mary referred to as group telepathy. Max looked at the mirror and saw the burns on his back healing. At this time, Bass's call echoed again. Max left a note and departed, ready to find Bass and seek answers. Meanwhile, other employees were in a meeting. The manager stated that distress signals had been sent. Now all they could do was wait. This caused public anger. Everyone was clamoring to leave this place. The manager was on the verge of collapsing under high tension. When the situation finally stabilized, the doctor noticed Max walking on the deck. She followed him all the way to the mud pit room and discovered the miraculous plants inside. Mary was worried about the doctor's unborn child and quickly pulled her onto the deck. At that moment, a lifeboat from Zone C approached. They managed to escape despite the explosion. Could they also have been affected by the spores? Altering their physiology, Mary needed more information. She decided to rescue them. Unexpectedly, the newcomers had higher authority than Mary. They immediately demanded entry into the control room. Executive Jesse claimed he is in charge of a specific project, but he refuses to disclose specific information regarding the situation in Zone C. He summarized it with a single word, explosion. Survivors on the other side stated, Jesse claimed it was for testing a new device, secretly transporting something into the sea, and when the fog and explosion occurred in Zone C, Jesse remained extremely calm, as if he had known in advance. This person is very suspicious. When the employees registered the survivors, they noticed that Jesse's name was not on the list for Zone C. The manager also noticed that Jesse didn't recognize his own deputy. They must be more vigilant. Meanwhile, Mary focused on studying the circles. 
it seems to be a way of recording time, similar to the rings of a tree. The nodes on the ring represent five major extinctions, and the final ring represents the present. They want to destroy this place and restart the Earth. Jesse demanded a restart of the production module. The manager struggled to close the valve, and immediately refused. Jesse didn't give up. He instigated and bribed three employees to go and restart the production module. The three individuals went to find compressed carbon dioxide to redirect the gas into the fire suppression system. In an attempt to incapacitate Baz and the others, unexpectedly, upon entering the mud pit room, they stepped on spores. Baz immediately sensed a problem. He sent David to investigate, but the three had already opened the valve. David was unfortunately sprayed by the gas and died on the spot. It turns out it wasn't carbon dioxide inside, but rather a harmful gas. York realized they had been tricked by Jesse. He loudly warned Baz to leave quickly. The plants inside the room quickly withered. Bess and Max collapsed one after another. Jesse closed the door. York, who couldn't escape in time, was trapped inside. After the oxygen was depleted, he lost his breath. In fact, Jesse's intention was to kill the spores. Mary disagreed with his approach. She decided to manually shut down the fire suppression system. The manager opened the door, allowing her to enter smoothly. As soon as Mary entered, she saw York's body. She squeezed in to turn off the fire suppression system. The spores quickly regained vitality. Max, who was unconscious, woke up. As in the dark, was also not in danger. Mary helped Max leave. Hun was deeply affected by York's death. He had always wanted to reunite with his children at home. He convinced York to help Jesse. York's death. Hun felt responsible. The manager interrupted him. Self-blame is not important at the moment, but rather to uncover the truth and prevent more people from dying. It's time to hold Jesse accountable. At this point, Jesse confessed. These ancient spores are called ancestors. Their appearance has awakened the entire North Sea. If the spores enter the oil storage facility, they will convert the oil into organic matter, destroying the entire oil field, not only depleting the oil reserves, but also damaging the company. If the spores continue to spread and expand, they will invade human life, infiltrating food and water sources, infecting every city on the East Coast. Therefore, it is necessary to eliminate all the spores before the situation gets out of control. This is also why he disregarded the pipeline pressure and caused the explosion in Zone C. But these are all their assumptions. The company did not thoroughly study the spores or look for ways to coexist. Mary knows spores are not so easily killed. In fact, they are accelerating their growth, preparing to counterattack. Occasional tremors come from the seabed. Mary places her hope in Max. Let him try to communicate with the spores. Max approaches with his palm. He feels the spores anger. Max sees a massive tsunami. They plan to retaliate against humans. Mary knows they can't start a full-scale war. If they anger them, it won't end well. They'll lose the chance to cooperate with the spores. She must find Bass and use him to communicate with the spores. The seabed has already cracked open with deep trenches. A tsunami is about to hit. Everyone heads to the mud pit room to seek help from Bess to establish a connection with the ancestors. York's body at the door is already covered by vegetation. They walk deeper into the house. Bess is waiting in the center of the spores, tears streaming down his face. He says the spores have cut off contact with him. It's too late for everything. It turns out Bess was the one who had been listening and trying to prevent the disaster all along. He was right from the beginning. On the other side, Jesse can't let Mary ruin their original plan. He brings his own C subordinates into the control room, continuing with the plan to destroy the spores, preparing to blow up the entire drilling rig. His subordinates turn on the broadcast, intentionally revealing Jesse's true nature, making him reveal the plan that would result in the sacrifice of all the staff. Wally escapes on a secret helicopter. Just at that moment, the spores enter the pipeline. The entire platform is shaking uncontrollably. Jesse immediately activates the launcher program. Immediately after, a helicopter sends a rescue message. He quickly prepares to evacuate. The doctor quickly catches up. His subordinates and the control engineer stay behind to stop the program from running further. Jesse runs to the deck and waits for rescue. Unexpectedly, Hutton suddenly appears. He grabs Jesse. He gathers other employees to prepare for evacuation. Meanwhile, on Beth's side, he is still trying to communicate with the ancestors. The spores emitting blue light keep floating, eventually gathering into a complete circle. The tsunami is about to arrive. The spores are determined to restart the entire world. Everyone can only retreat, but Baz insists on staying. 
to coexist with the spores here. Even in death, the manager sees his determination, and can only turn away and leave. One by one, everyone boards the helicopter, and leaves the platform. Bez walks into the massive cluster of spores, and with that, the incoming tsunami, engulfs everything. The waves are about to crash onto the shore, destroying the lives of thousands of people. Jesse suddenly speaks. He says, this helicopter isn't here to take you home. It's going to a very important location. This season comes to an end. The entire season has been building up, thinking it was a stormy manner scenario, but it turned out to be an apocalyptic sci-fi drama, a battle of revenge by ancient intelligent organisms, or maybe an environmental awareness film. The setup was relatively clear and could be justified. However, the form outweighed the content. The story lacked highlights. While watching, it was inevitably boring. If you enjoy my channel, please give me a subscription.